Hey guys, welcome back to A Online. I'm just here, chilling in my garden, and I wanted to show you this colouring in page from this week, where we've got this little elf man having tea with a ladybird and a caterpillar, because I want to show you how to make this scene out of clay. So let's head into the garage and I'll show you how to make it. Okay guys, here I am in the garage and I'm about to cut some clay for my elf tea party set. I'm going to need some pancakes of clay so I'm going to cut it nice and thin using my wire cutter. And then you've always got to make sure that you wrap up your clay afterwards so that the big block doesn't get dry. I took my rolling pin back inside when I was making pastry so I'm going to have to use my hands to flatten this into a pancake. I'm going to whack it out a few times with the flat part of my palm and I'm also going to turn it over and throw it down onto the bench because that makes it thinner each time I do that as well. Next I want to cut a circle out of this slab so I'm going to look around to find something that's perfectly circular to trace around. This circle is going to be the top of my mushroom table, so I want it to be a little bit rounded and I'm going to use my finger and thumb to pinch it into the shape that I want. Right now I'm building my mushroom upside down, so you'll have to imagine what it's going to look like when it gets flipped over. I'll just use a sponge to get the edges nice and smooth and then it's time to make another slab for the stem of my mushroom. I'm making the slab the same way, flipping it over plenty of times and slapping it gently but firmly with my hand. Now I have to imagine how long I want my stem to be. That seems like a good length to me. So now I can cut off the excess clay and start to imagine how wide I want my stem to be. I'm curling up my slab into a cylinder and when I think that the cylinder is the right width I'm going to make a marking on the slab so that I know to cut the rest off. Now it's time to join these two edges so this cylinder becomes permanent. I'm going to join them together by smudging with my fingers. That's looking pretty good, but we also have to smudge the inside and for that we're going to need a smudging tool. I want my mushroom stem to flare out at the bottom because that's going to stop the mushroom from falling over. And I think it also looks nice. So I'm just using my duck hands, just like making a pinch pot, to quack out the bottom of the stem and make it wider. Now that it's nice and flared, I think it's going to stand out really well on its own and it's time to join it on to the top of the mushroom. The first thing to do is to mark where we want it to go. Then I'm going to use my tool to make some little scratches around where we're going to stick it because that's going to make it stick on a lot better. And we've always got to remember our water as well. Ah, that's looking exactly like an upside down mushroom. I'm just going to move it onto this turntable so I can more easily turn it around. I'm going to add a reinforcement coil around the stem to make the join a lot stronger. If you guys have been watching my other videos, I'm sure you already know what a reinforcement coil is, but if not, a reinforcement coil is just a tiny skinny sausage that makes a join much stronger. There we go, that reinforcement coil is looking good and I'm going to use a wooden tool to join it on because a wooden tool is much less pointy than my metal one and I won't make so many scratchy marks. I'm also going to use my wooden tool to make the gills of the mushroom. You won't be able to see this when I flip the mushroom the right way up, but it'll be a little secret detail for anyone who looks underneath. That's the structure of the mushroom done. 
Before I flip this over, I need to leave it alone for a day or two to dry a bit. But stay tuned because you're going to see that in just a second. Alright, I am back in the garage. It's two days later and we're going to flip over this mushroom. Look at that! So cute and so structurally sound. If you've had a look at the Elf Tea Party colouring in page, then you might have noticed that there's a ladybug that lives inside the stem of the mushroom. So I'm going to cut out its little doorway now. A cute little doorway and we just need a little bit of water to smooth out its edges. Now I think we need a chair to go with this mushroom table. I still have some of my slab from two days ago that's been keeping wet inside a plastic bag, so I'm going to use that. I'm just going to make it nice and smooth with my kidney tool. I'm going to once again be using a leaf from the garden as decoration for this chair. So I've got a really nice big leaf and I'm going to press it into my slab. This leaf is the perfect shape for the back of my chair, so I'm going to cut all the way around the leaf with a tool. The base of my chair is going to be made out of a pinch pot, so I'm going to need a little ball of clay to pinch that. Here's a little pinch pot refresher course if you can't remember. First of all, you need to put your thumb into the ball of clay. Then we're going back to our friendly duck face hands to pinch all the way around and widen the hole. I'm gently pinch, pinch, pinching until the hole is as big as I want it to be and the walls of the pinch pot are nice and even. Now I can join on my leaf. I'm going to use some water and I'm going to make sure I smudge everywhere so it's joined on really, really well. Now let's see this chair and table together. So magical! This little elf table setting is crying out for a tiny teapot and some tiny cakes, so let's make them next. I'm going to make them out of my scraps because they only need to be very small. Little details as small as these ones don't have to be made hollow, you can just model them out of solid clay. To make my teapot, I'm going to start with an egg shape and then I'm going to build on a foot, a handle and a spout. When you're working on something as small as this, it's quite useful to use a paintbrush to smooth things out because your finger would be too big. Now my teapot looks like a little egg on a stand and it's time to add the spout. The spout is just made out of a really skinny little curvy sausage. I'm going to roll another sausage to be the handle. And the last part of my teapot is a lid with a tiny little knob on it. All finished my teapot, here it is. I think it looks very sweet and it reminds me of Alice in Wonderland. Now I'm going to make a teacup. To make my teacup, I'm just going to make the smallest pinch pot of all time on the end of my pinky finger. Then it's going to get a little blob of clay as a base and a tiny, tiny sausage handle. Now 
That's looking really nice, but I think it needs a saucer too, just to be a little bit more prim and proper. The saucer is just a pancake with the edges curved a little bit upwards. That is looking like a really nice tiny afternoon tea, but if you've seen the colouring in page, you'll remember that there are a few little cakes to go with it, so let's make those now. First, I'm going to make a plate, just like I made the saucer for the teacup. Now I'm going to make the little cupcakes, and these are super simple to make. They're just like little blobs with the patty pan lines carved into them. The final thing that really transforms them into cupcakes is the little cherry on. There we go, three little cakes, so cute. All ready for someone to come enjoy this tea party. The final thing I'm going to do is cut some arches into the base of the chair to give it four distinct legs. It's been sitting here drying for a little while, which means it's going to be a bit stronger, which is perfect. I'm cutting these archways out just like I did the little doorway in the mushroom. Now that those four archways are all cut, I can use some water on my finger to just smooth those openings that I've just made. Let's have a look at this tea setting all together. I think that this is perfect for a little elf and his little insect pets to enjoy a tea party together. Make sure you're tuning in to A Online every week so you don't miss part two where I'm going to make the elf and his little friends. Thanks for stopping by guys, see you next time.